Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about how to take full advantage of the current seasonal event. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the question that I get asked most often is, first of all, how do I increase my battle power? Second of all, how do I make Masetta? And third of all, I just completed the story, what else is there to do in the game? And I'm going to be addressing all three of these questions because they kind of overlap with each other. So the first question is, how do I increase my battle power? The easiest way to increase your battle power is simply upgrading your gear as well as your augments. Your augments play a very big part in increasing your battle power. Now, please do not aim for what I have over here. What I have over here is considered endgame whale territory. You do not need any of these augments to do any of the content available in the game unless you are speedrunning and you're trying to get world first or you know the best time in your server, time attacks and stuff like that, then sure you might want to aim for these augments augments. But for the regular folk that just want to complete or at least participate in the true endgame content, you do not need any of those augments. You can get away with just regular LC capsules. Now, of course, you do want to eventually aim for the true endgame stuff, as this is uh, going to make you significantly more powerful. But what the majority of players should be aiming for are going to be all of the regular LC capsules, which include Gladiosol LC, High L Domina LC, Gigas Maste LC, as well as Hal Finale LC. These four are kind of essentials and kind of the building blocks of making your character strong. Now, an XC capsule is optional. An XC capsule is awfully expensive, even though there is currently a scratch at the moment, so the prices for XC capsules have gone down significantly. If you do decide to go for an XD capsule, I do recommend getting the deft variant of the XD capsule, which gives you floor potency. The reason for this is because all of our current 10-star rarity weapons do not give a 100% crit rate, which means that floor potency does play a big part in the damage variants that you deal. Um, however, the thing is, you can see that these capsules are going for a lot of money at 7.7 .7 million up to 8 million and it just goes up. So these are really, really expensive and might be out of your budget. So what you can do is you can scale down. Instead of getting the Def Parfait, which gives you all potency plus 4%, we can scroll down over here with the XD Def Mel Ra, which is melee as well as range potency plus 4%. So it doesn't give all potency, but if we look at the prices over here, it's significantly cheaper. Instead of about 8 million, you're paying about 6.5 million. Now it does scale up incredibly quickly, because the XD capsules, keep in mind, the only way to obtain XD capsules is by swiping and spending real money. So these are whale capsules. So if you are planning to use any of these, you might want to look down the list over here and you probably are going to need to make some sort of compromise in order to make it an affordable build. However, I just want to remind everyone that these XD capsules are optional. These are powerful augments, yes. However, you do not need them to complete any of the endgame content. So let's say you're a fully free-to-play player and you are not going to be spending 8 million Masetta, 5 million Masetta on a single augment. And you're like, Caro, that's way too expensive. I don't want to spend any of my Masetta. I want to farm for everything myself. What should you be focusing on? It's going to be the LC augments. Your Gladiosol, your High Eldomina LC, Mastery LC. Probably not Mastery LC. This one's kind of a gimmick. You don't really need this anymore because the stats aren't significant enough. But Gigas Maste LC, Hal Finale LC, High Ale Domina LC, or High Red Domina LC, you gotta pick one of these, and then Grand Dread Keeper LC. You can just roll all of these LC capsules and you're gonna be fine as well. You don't have to do anything fancy, you can just have all LC capsules on all six of your augment slots and you're gonna be okay. Now for those who are wondering why my High Ale Domina says LCS instead of just LC, it's simply because this was obtained through an SG Scratch bonus. Um, I believe it was the support scratch that I obtained the LCS variant from it. And no, it's not named after the North American League of Legends, LCS. It's simply just an LC capsule with an S variant slapped on the back, which stands for success rate 100%. That's what the S stands for, okay? Now, another alternative for your Sith Augment is a trippable capsule, simply because it gives you enough potency. Keep in mind, it has to be a stamina trippable, a spirit trippable, or a guard trippable, because that actually gives you potency plus 3%. If you go with Def Trippable, it only gives you 2.5% potency, where in that case, you're better off with just a regular LC capsule instead. So now that we've covered over the augments, we need to talk about the weapons and armors. What weapons and what armors should you be going for? 
The easiest to obtain is going to be the regular Octo Armors. All you need to do is go to Growthman Exchange over here and scroll all the way to the very bottom and you're going to see Octo Armor. You can actually exchange 300 Growthman for a Fixa Guard level 1 Octo Armor. I highly recommend picking this up, especially considering how easy it is to get Growthman now. You can get a lot of Growthman from clearing Lasile Exploration. As you can see, you have a daily that is tied to this, which rewards you 30 Growthman every single day. So make sure that you do it because that means in 10 days, you'll be able to get the one with the fix a guard however let's say you're a little bit more impatient and you're like caro 300 growthman is way too much for me it's perfectly fine you can simply pick up the regular armor over here which is only going to cost you 50 growthman you can just pick up the regular one without a fixa and then fix a transfer the fixa later down the line or maybe you get extremely lucky and when you're farming in lasile exploration you get an octo armor with a high fixa to drop you can transfer that fixa to your current existing octo armor and the reason why you want to take full advantage of this is because currently in lasile exploration as you can see down here rare drop rate plus 200 as well as fix a drop rate plus 200 you can definitely take full advantage of this as these boosts will play a significant part in the amount of LC capsules you get as well as fixes on your Octo armors as well as Vershmel weapons so that is definitely pretty nice. Now if Lasile Exploration isn't really your cup of tea, you can run the limited time quest a gift from Benefond. Personally, I recommend running this over Lasile Exploration because you get the same boost, but on top of that, you can also get the new Octo Armors. You can get Octo Armor Arga, Belt, and Sheza. The reason why I wouldn't buy these on the shop right now is simply because, you know, if you're just starting out, you're still gearing up, you're still using the Argenti Armors, the Argenti Weapons, or even like the Seasonal Weapons, I prefer to just farm for everything myself. That way you don't need to waste your hard-earned Masetta because you're going to need that Masetta in order to enhance all of your armors and all of your weapons to plus 80, then limit break them and potential break them. So you need your Masetta for that. So it's better off that you just farm for everything yourself. And on top of that, the limited time quest is going to give you Arms Refiners, Arms Refiners 2, a variety of all the different LC capsules. It's going to give you the Winter Special Scratch tickets. And more importantly, it's going to reward you 30,000 seasonal points so that you can buy out all of the items from this seasonal shop. Now, you may have noticed that, Carol, you didn't mention about the Flugel Guard weapons. Yes, the Flugel Guard weapons do drop from the Limited Time Quest, and they also drop from Lasile Exploration, but the drop rate is awfully low, so if you do get it, congratulations, you can just use that weapon and you're good to go. You know, then you can skip all of the other weapon choices that I'm about to mention. However, if uh, the chances of getting this is going to be awfully low, so uh, even with all of this extra rare drop rate, if you get lucky and you get it, congratulations. But uh, don't really bank on it. I don't expect a lot of people to be getting Flugel Guards from the limited time quest as well as Lasile Exploration. So now that we've covered the armors, the next thing is the weapons. As for weapons, I recommend people to just go with the Melek weapon series. I do know that we are getting new weapons as well as new armors at the end of the month with the next live stream. So in February, we will have new weapons and new armors. However, keep in mind, whenever they do introduce new weapons and new armors, the drop rate for those weapons are awfully low, and the average player is still going to be using the previous generation of weapons for quite some time before upgrading to the new weapons. So that is why I think it's okay for the average player to invest into a Melek weapon. Is the Melek weapon the best? No, it's a 9-star rarity weapon. However, I believe it is the middle of the pack and it's very cost effective. As you can see over here, the Katanos, which is a relatively popular weapon, is only going for 24,000 on the player market. And on top of that, if you're farming for all of those LC augments, you're going to be farming for veterans anyway. So when you're farming for veterans over here, you're going to get Melek weapons to drop anyway. So you might as well just keep farming here, keep farming the veterans. And if you get a Melek drop, congratulations, you can just use it or you can just upgrade it. And the nice thing about using the Melek weapons is because the weapon drops so often, getting a fixa on it is relatively inexpensive. So for example, a fixa Vital level 1 Katana, which is highly valued simply because it gives you that crit rate, only costs 280,000. Versus a Flugel Guard Katana, if we look at any fixa one, you know, we're looking at 60 million. It's significantly more expensive, but you know, let's go down a tier and let's use the Tisha weapons and let's see how much those cost. Tisha Katana with a fixa one, you know, you're still looking at 2.2 million. So this is why I prefer the Melek weapons for the average player, simply because it's very cost effective. You're able to get high fixes on these weapons relatively inexpensively. And if you don't want to spend your hard earned Masetta, you can just farm for a fixa and you will get one relatively soon. So it's not that bad. 
So by getting your Octo Armors as well as your Malik weapons and you fully upgrade them, fully enhance them as well as fully augment them, you will be at around 4,000 battle power and you'll comfortably be able to do all the content the game has to offer. However, that only answers the first question which was how to increase my battle power. The second question is how do I make more money? I need Masetta in order to gear up and where do I make more money? And uh, unfortunately, the answer is going to be doing the stuff that people don't want to do. And the number one piece of content that the majority of players do not enjoy doing is dual quest. Going to dual quest phase two and phase three and spamming it over and over in order to farm all the different Fusia capsules is an absolute pain in the butt and incredibly boring in my personal opinion. However, there is a lot of money to be made there. And the reason why I say there's a lot of money to be made there is simply because all of the true endgame capitals require these pieces. So for example, the Gladius Soul, it requires Starro Soul, Irati Soul 4, as well as the Dual Fusia. So these Fusia capsules are only obtainable through the Dual Quest, and these capsules are not tradable. However, the Gladius Soul is tradable, so what you need to do is you need to farm up all three of these pieces, or at the very least farm up the Fusia pieces and buy these from the player market, and then craft a Gladius Soul and then sell that on the market. I personally do not recommend buying the Starro Soul as well as the Irati Soul off the player market. I recommend farming them yourselves, simply because uh, these will go up in price significantly. If everyone buys them, then you're just not going to make any profit. So making sure that you maximize profits, you just farm it yourself is the easiest surefire way to not mess up. And then as for Dual Quest Phase 3, that actually drops the other Fusia capsule, which is used to create Grand Dread Keeper. Grand Dread Keeper is currently one of the best in slot augments for the end game players, so uh, this also has a lot of value. As you can see over here, each Gladius Soul is going for 1.1 million Masetta, so crafting those and selling that if you farm for everything, that's all profit, which is very nice. Now, if we look at the Grand Dread Keepers, they're going for about 650,000. So some of you guys may be like, Carol, that's not a lot of money. What are you talking about? Well, the thing is, the cost of Dread Keepers have gone down so much that you can make quite a lot of money. As you can see over here, Dread Keeper 5 is going for 30,000 Masetta. So if you buy 10 of them, that'll cost you 300,000 Masetta. So you're essentially doubling your money if you craft a Grand Dread Keeper. The reason for this is because it's going to cost you 10 Grand Dread Keeper 5s. So if you don't farm it yourself and you just buy it off the market, that'll cost you 300,000. But the Fusia capitals over here, these 10, you're going to farm it yourself. And if we look at the Dual Quest Phase 3 over here, you actually get three of these Fusia capsules as long as you get an S rank, which means that you clear it in under a minute and a half or two minutes, which uh, is really short per run. So essentially every four runs, you're going to be making that much money, which is like eight minutes maximum. So every eight minutes, you're making 300,000 Masada, which is pretty awesome if you are buying the Dreadkeeper 5s. However, let's say that you farm for your own Dreadkeeper 5s if, because you're killing veterans, because you're getting the Melek weapons, you're getting the LC capsules and all of that stuff. Then it's 100% profit because you farm for everything yourself. You're investing your time, of course, but all of that Masetta goes straight into your pocket and life is good. So the next question a lot of people are going to be asking is, Carol, I don't have money to invest into these dual quest gear and all of that stuff. Why are you telling me to do it? Well, the thing is you can get all of this for free from the seasonal shop. So remember the Christmas 2023, this is the previous seasonal event. If you scroll down over here, you can see there is an Ajax armor that is at enhancement level 60. But keep in mind, it's already limit broken all the way to level 80. So you can just pick up this armor and just enhance it one more level to get it to plus 61 to unlock the extra slot and just fill this up with the phase three augments. So if we scroll down over here, you can also get all of the different phase three augments from this seasonal shop. However, let's say that you missed out on the Christmas one. You can also go to the current seasonal shop over here, scroll down a little bit, and right here are all of the different phase three capsules that you could also pick up. Now it will cost you quite a lot of seasonal points if you were to buy out all of these, because as you can see here, we're looking at 2.2 million. So what I recommend people to do is to look these up on the player market, especially the top four over here. These four usually go for just a couple thousand on the player market. I would buy the ones that go for a couple thousand and the ones that are more expensive, such as the Makames as well as the Plutos, if they're going for like a hundred thousand or a million or whatever, then uh, you might as well just buy them off seasonal points if you want to, to save a little bit of Masetta. However, if you're a little bit more impatient, you can just buy it off the player market and use these. So now that I've answered two of the three questions, first one, how do I increase my battle power as well as how do I make Masetta? The last question is, what else is there to do in the game after I completed the story? The question that I get asked the most is going to be, how do I level up all of my classes? As you can see, even a lazy bum like myself has finally gotten all of my classes to level 80. 
what did I do? The surefire way to level up incredibly quickly is going to be Vanford Laboratories rank 5. This is my place to go. I really enjoy farming Vanford Laboratories rank 5. You're not really farming any great loot there. You're getting raw Masetta, you're getting Arms Refiners 2, you're getting Golden Prim Swords, and on top of that, you're just getting a buttload of EXP. Remember, at rank 5, all of the mobs are level 70. But because you have that 300% EXP boost, whenever there's a Forte, I actually grew four levels in a single PSE burst. Simply because it was a Forte, which meant all of the mobs were gold enemies. But because gold enemies give you more EXP, I think it's like 200% more EXP. And then we had the campaign boost of 300% more EXP. They multiplied with each other and you just got ridiculous amounts of EXP. I went in there at level 75. I came out level 79 in one PSE burst. It was absolutely bonkers so uh definitely take advantage of that in case you do want to level up any of your classes keep in mind this works with all of the different ranks let's say you're level 10 you can go to rank one farm over here and slowly work your way up the ranks as you keep leveling up and need more and more exp personally i just like vanford laboratories however you can go to mount magnus if you want or Rezel forest they all work now the reason why i don't really farm in retem al noth is because at rank four all of the mobs are level 60. So if you're at level 75 and you're trying to get to level 80, it takes a while because uh, all the mobs are level 60. Even with the EXP boost, it does it slows down significantly versus when all the mobs are level 70. Even when you're level 75, you do level up a lot faster. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.